This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to Paranormal Stakeout. I'm your host, Larry Lawson, coming to you from the studios of the X-Zone Broadcast Nation, otherwise known as the mothership of paranormal programming. Uh, Folks, tonight is a different type of show than we usually have on Paranormal Stakeout. We may not be talking specifically about ghosts, UFOs, or cryptoids, but this discussion is going to have the characteristics of all three. Some of the things we are going to discuss is remote viewing, Satanism, One World Order, Nazis, reptilian humanoids, and a city under a city where 100,000 children are purported to be used as sex slaves. This city is found under the Getty Museum in Los Angeles, California. And to discuss this amazing discovery with us is Mr. Stephen D. Kelly. Stephen was born and raised in Southern California. He started his career in the precision electro-optics field during the advent of the laser. He rose from the optics manufacturing technician to manager of quality control, engineering and production control. During this time, Stephen was advancing the state of the art of semiconductors, military systems, and massive optics. After leaving to start his own company, SK Industries, he became involved with the CIA, working in support of Iraq versus Iran. Sometime later, the newly formed company received a contract to build solid-state lasers for what turned out to be an NSA operation run by the one and only Oliver North. It was the result of this experience that Stephen became awake and began the process of researching the truth and getting on the path of enlightenment. Stephen has appeared on numerous talk shows, seminars, and events to discuss his findings. You can find him on Facebook at Stephen D. Kelly, on the website at truthcatradio.com. His book, Lasers, Cavers, and Magic, has recently been re-released on Amazon Kindle under Cities Under the Plain. And probably the latest and most interesting, I think, is on April 4th of 2017, he filed a report, a complaint with the FBI on child trafficking and sexual abuse under the Getty Museum. Steve, I'd like to welcome you to Paranormal Stakeout, my friend. Well, thank you, Lawrence. And oh, my God, isn't this the most topical thing in the world right now, especially with this talk of uh, North Korea trying to supposedly get a nuke L.A.? Wouldn't that be a convenient way to hide the evidence real quick, huh? Well, that, that it would be. That, that it would be. Uh, just give our, our listeners a, just an idea. You obviously got start in the optics field. How did that lead you to government service, for lack of a better term? All right. Well, first of all, i got to tell you guys, you know, when you try to understand why people do anything or why things happen to you, you give it up because the reality is that they know what you're going to do before you're even born. Okay, these guys have got the technology there. You know, we talk about aliens. Yeah, we're, we're alien stuff is definitely involved, and they've got alien technology, and they know who to look out for. Okay. And so they knew what I was going to do. They knew what I was going to invent before I invented it. And I have a twin brother, and for years and years they thought that my twin brother was me, and it wasn't until I had a sit-down with the trust fund manager of the Getty Museum that they actually realized that I was the guy they were looking for. Interesting. Interesting. So uh, you, you got your start in optics, though. Uh, you ended up working for Ollie North. Now, how did they you, – you, I see in your, your, your posts and everything that you were recruited – how long did they work on you? Well, okay, that that stuff uh, never goes away. Of course, you know, all the my first experience with the CIA, of course, is back with the Saddam Hussein business, and that was when I was really kind of naive and just getting out of the, uh, uh, you know, the electro optics and and getting recruited, and I really knew nothing. But back in those days, it was all sexy. <clears throat> that kind of fell apart as soon as the FBI got involved uh, because uh, the CIA just backed off and they threw us under the bus. This is typical. This is why they use people like us. Um, that was myself and my brother. The Ollie North thing came up kind of out of the blue because of an association with uh, Don Nixon, who was the nephew of Richard Nixon. He, uh, you know, be, just that's a long story in there, of course. But uh, 
that went south. Uh, I fig- I knew right away. I figured out they were trying to get me into Area 51. Uh, ultimately, that was what this was all about. They were trying to recruit me to get me into Area 51. Years later, uh, when I became really big in the uh, photomicrolithography and I developed special processes using fine silver and I, I developed the concepts of, and I, of course, I got hooked up with um, Billy Meyer. We shouldn't forget that. When I got hooked no. up to Bill... I got hooked up to Billy Meyer immediately after the NSA episode, and this is where I got exposed to the silver samples that they had gotten from the aliens, and of course with my expertise with silver and electro or photolithography, et cetera, et cetera, I figured out how they make these damn beam ships. A little bit later, I actually set a trap for them where I offered the services to the world in the uh, government, what was it, the... Uh, Colorado, the um, University of Colorado sent me a contract to make uh, some parts for them. Turned out they were doing UFO propulsion uh, experimentation, and I learned that fine silver is also a lasing media, which produces ultraviolet light. And, of course, if you're building a beam ship out of fine silver, you could use that to produce billions of picowatts of ultraviolet light, which would probably push your little beam ship up to the speed of light really quick. Well. And I'm hoping we get a chance to discuss a lot of that in detail. I don't know how we're going to do it all in one We're never going to do it. We're never going to do it. We're going to try anyway. But uh, when we come back from our break in just a minute, let's let's get right into the Getty Museum. I want to find out how you knew about it, what you've done, and uh, where we're heading from here. So with that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Stephen D. Kelly on Paranormal Stakeout. We'll be back in just a few after this break. Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.HolisticCancerFoundation.com. Hello, I'm Pete Marsh. With my daughter Justina, we will be presenting the new radio show, Too Good to Be True. If something seems too good to be true, it usually is. But with the help of Justina's amazing gifts, we're going to gain insight into questions that don't yet have complete answers. Have you wondered who built Stonehenge and for what reason? 
Wire crop circles found in the same region as Stonehenge and elsewhere. Are crop circles a hoax or are they created with technologies that we have little knowledge of? Who built the pyramids in Egypt and also in other countries? How and why were they built? Was the Titanic switched with the Britannic as part of a gigantic insurance fraud or for more insidious reasons? What caused the Tunguska event when trees were flattened over an 800 square mile area in Siberia? Will the new insights be too good to be true? Well, that will depend on what you are prepared to believe. Please join us as we start on this journey together. For more information on Too Good To Be True, visit www.xzbn.net. Little children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of the night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides free MP3 players for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old-time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8-hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500 plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. Go to our website at Songs and Stories for Soldiers. Soldiers.us. Help us help a veteran make it through the night. Welcome back, folks, to uh, Paranormal Stakeout. My guest tonight, Stephen D. Kelly. And uh, Stephen, fascinating stuff. I uh, want to talk about the Getty Museum. That's in Los Angeles. You say that there's a city underneath that complex that holds 100,000 kidnapped children. Is that pretty accurate? <clears throat> well, the uh, 100,000 children, the city, you got to imagine a city is capable of holding much more than 100,000 people. And uh, the, the 100,000, these cities, of course, are scattered all over the country. There's at least 250 of them. They're all hooked up. So these, these can be scattered. And, I, and the authorities know. When I re- filed the report with the FBI, they acknowledged that there was more. In fact, I didn't even have to say it. They knew there was more than one facility, and they were all hooked up by uh, by trains and what have you. So they assumed that these these children were scattered okay so the fbi the fbi has already acknowledged your complaint and and has uh verified it is that well i mean <clears throat> this is the thing and people need to understand is when you file a complaint with the fbi about a criminal matter like this they do not give you a case number the only reference is your name and your phone number so if i call them up and give them my name and my phone number to anybody answering the phone they can pull it up on the computer and see the file they are not obligated to give any information about whether or not they will pursue an investigation or, or what the results of that information no, are. they would do that. They're not obliged to call me back either, even though I've been requesting a call back. But it's been two weeks since I filed this report, and I called them back a second time. They verified that the report was in their system. But they also said that there was really they you know they couldn't verify whether or not their report was being done or not. Now I actually used other methods to uh, find out what was going on. I actually used some psychics to find out what was going on, and this okay. is what I found out. This is why I found out yesterday. I actually had a psychic that knew nothing about the Getty yesterday. We did this and asked him what's under the Getty, and he said he took one thought and said there's a ghost town under there. That's what we called it, a ghost town. Mm -hmm. And by ghost town, he didn't just mean it was like an Old West ghost town. He meant it was a city, but it wasn't just a city full of humans because there was a lot of activity and full of humans, but there's also a lot of entities down there. He called them ghosts, called them spirits, demons, angels, whatever the hell. People need to understand that this world we live in isn't just us humans. There's a lot of other stuff going on that we don't see. Well, and, and you know something, Stephen, that's that's the one of the big things in this show is we keep an open mind because there's tons of things out there we in the normal world, if you will, cannot explain. But what I want to know is this city, how did you find out about it? We found out about it because during a tour, a VIP tour of the facility, we saw the elevator. We saw the, the bomb door to going to the elevator, and the explanation for the elevator was cryptic. The explanation for the bomb door was cryptic. That's when we came in with remote viewers. We went down there and looked at, saw what it was. We've done this multiple times with multiple people, and immediately, this is how we got it verified, was the day after this remote viewer made this first entrance and saw what was down there, the people from the Getty, not just the trust fund manager, but people above the trust fund manager, immediately freaked out, wanted to 
put the I thought we were going to die. If ever I thought I was going to die, I thought I was going to die then for sure because they were aware of what we had done because the first level that they ran into was hundreds of psychics. And this thing about remote viewers and all this, you have to understand that the CIA, the NSA, and all these really high-end agencies have armies of these remote viewers. They recruit these people. They look for them. The children that they're kidnapping, these 100,000 children, are screened to find the ones that have these skills. And they, this is how they get these people to do these things. Mm-hmm. Okay. Backing up a little bit. When you say we went through that VIP tour, who's we? Well, my brother and my brother's okay. associate. Yeah. Okay. So you got in just because of your connections with the government. You my, got the my brother's my brother's buddy, the guy that was to become was recruited to become the trust fund manager of the Getty. He was a high level mason. His dad was a high level mason. His dad was essentially killed. They took this guy, bumped him up. His good buddy was was my brother's associate. I had just gone through the recruitment process myself, so I heard about what was going on, so I started briefing this guy on everything. So as he was being recruited to become a Templar, essentially, they sent him to the Isle of Malta and made him a Templar, Told, heard the whole story about what was involved in that. And uh, once, once he became a Templar, though, we lost him. He became one of them. But up until that point, we had him working for us, but once, once he joined their side, first thing he tried to do was recruit us to work for them. Now, after we penetrated this, this thing, instead of trying to kill us, they tried to recruit us, which, and basically, and this is for a while during that period of time, this was the Clinton administration. And I tried to work with them for a little bit. And, and they gave me some BS assignment, which was essentially protect the earth from aliens. And, uh, I said, okay, fine. Don't shoot down any more airplanes. Cause they had just shot down to 800 and then they go on Halloween. They shoot down flight 990. And that was when I severed my relationship with them completely. Okay. Well now that's, a, that, that's a whole mouthful there. That's a, that's a big part of the story. Now you got to understand something being a, uh, being a cop like I am, I got to take things in succession. So I want to back up a little bit. You go into the built the, the the museum you find the strange elevator the bomb doors mm-hmm. was there anything else that caught your eye oh yeah that, <laughs> give it to me what is it what, the, the army of nsa people the armory full of m16s everything how did you see how did you see the armory how did they let you see it's, the armory it's there it's part was part of the tour is it really okay oh, yeah it's just like the white house has a room full of m16s same thing yeah, but normally they don't let the general public take a look at their arm. Well, that's well no, but they didn't. This was remember who this VIP tour. Let me just put this into perspective. Hillary Clinton wanted to go on this VIP tour, and this was during the Clinton administration, and they said no. Okay. 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 Yeah, that's that gives you a little perspective of who was getting to see this stuff. Gotcha. All right. So then afterwards, after seeing this stuff, your interest has peaked. You've already been briefed. You already kind of know there's something funny going on there. You enlist the aid of some remote viewers. Mm-hmm. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. How did you get? The, how did you recruit them to your side, if you will? Well, the remote viewers were already friends because, uh, you know, right. I had already been working on this uh, psychic stuff because of uh, that's a whole story in itself. But I'm a I'm a weapons guy. Okay. I'm, my thing is inventing. Uh, advanced weapons technology. That was my thing. That's why they wanted me to help them fight aliens. And when I, this was all during the Clinton administration, I realized in my effort to try to fight aliens, I realized weapons were useless. The human brain and the psychic abilities were the only thing we had. That's when I went 100% into developing my psychic skill, et cetera, et cetera. And that's where we are today. Okay. And and you possess those skills also from what I've read, correct? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. We we all do to some degree. It's like weightlifting. You just got to work on it. Well said. Well said. All right. So you've got your remote view. What did your remote viewers see exactly? Uh, well, the, they basically described the layers, how far down it went, what was on each layer. But when they got to the bottom layer, they got into the really nasty satanic stuff. And that's when they basically they did the what all Satanists or all pagans do when they get confronted with hardcore Satanism as they try to make excuses. They all mm-hmm. do that. Uh, sure. When when a dark side person that, that worships that stuff and thinks it's cool is confronted with the atrocities that are actually committed, the first thing they do is they'll say, oh, God and Satan are the same thing, it's all good, da 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 and they'll make, I heard it many, many times from these people, and that's one of the ways you know it's real, because they'll go into defensive mode and they'll try to defend it. And, sure. and not only that, the person that did the remote viewing basically said, okay, this is what I saw, that's it, I'm not going to talk to you anymore, adios. They disappeared. They, <laughs> Can't yeah, yeah. 
So how are Satanists involved? I mean, so we've got this big, beautiful building, oh. uh, J, J, yeah. J. Paul Getty. I mean, it's it's a it's a absolutely beautiful uh, facility. They've got this underground bunker. Where do the Satanists fit in? Well, the Satanists run the world, basically, and the Queen and the Crown and everything, it's all part of it. And this pedophilia nonsense and all that is, is a big, big part of it. And um, you got to realize is that you're, you, you know, this it's not just humans. You started getting into upper level. When you understand how the whole universe is set up, you understand the politics and you understand the mechanics of it all. Then you see how this all fits in, because it's real. It's politically speaking, there's only two sides: the uh, dark side, the other side, the service to self and the service to others. The Satanists fall into the service to self side. And they require the children and the human sacrifice and all this crap because it provides them with a certain energy, which is uh, is required by these higher level dark entities. And and uh, the torture and the blood products and all that is also part of it. So the human pedophiles and what have you, they provide a service by actually providing the blood product, and they also provide a, a uh, terror, which is called loosh. And this is actually a, a product that these people consume. And let me say that the loose produced by the Earth is some of the best in the entire universe, and it's a big business. Okay, this, back, back it up a little bit here. Loosh. Loosh, yeah. Loosh, what is that? Loosh is human emotional psychic, is negative human emotional psychic energy. It's bad chi, okay? It's the stuff you make when you're in, your heart's broken, you're in making hate, you're angry. This is, that's loosh. And my God, they're like vampires. They suck that stuff up. It's like Monsters Incorporated, the movie. That's what uh, it is. So this it's movie, an energy. It's not, it's not it's a tangible energy. thing. It's an energy. Okay. It's tangible to them. <laughs> but, oh, okay. But you see yeah. what I mean. I, yeah, I yeah, sure. I understand. But yeah, in their world, it's real. Um, but I'm not going to get into all that because that's just mechanics right now. But uh, yeah. but anyway. Way too far afield. So yeah, you've got the Satanists. Who else do you have down there? Well, you got Nazis and you got Zionists. That was one of the first things that really threw me off is when I was uh, learning about this stuff, I thought it was a Zionist thing because if you read the protocol protocols, you'll see there's passages in there where they talk about these underground cities and how they'll, if we ever rise up against them, they'll blow these things up. And I, uh, I know that's real because one of the guys that was one of my handlers, he was one of them, um, they sent to you know con- try to control me. I sent him an email and I said, hey, and I sent him that passage from the protocols about the undergrounds, the metropolitans, and he kind of freaked out and he immediately blew it and started saying stuff about the uh, Nazis. And he, he said, oh, we're not all a bunch of Zionists. There's Nazis down there here too. And that kind of blew me away. It took me a whole year to get used to it. But bottom line, that guy, they took him out. He was actually uh, assassinated because of um, he slipped okay. up and t- gave me too much info. Okay. Now, once again, you got to look at it from the uh, the outsider looking in here. I'm hearing um, Satanists. I'm hearing Nazis. Now I'm hearing Zionists. That's all in there. Pretty, pretty, pretty weird mixture. How well, do you prove that? The whole how, earth. How do you, all right. This well, is a good way to a good segue into that whole proof thing. First of all, I released this book five years ago. Okay, mm-hmm. when I came out and did this, and this was after I had sat down with these guys, and they told me that they knew I was going to take them down, but they didn't know how I was going to do it, and they pretty much said they couldn't do anything about it. And uh, <clears throat> you know, the thing is, is that if the Getty has uh, the building, just the building alone was six billion dollars. That doesn't include all the artwork and what have you, and it's nothing about the money that they have in their foundation. So I'm dealing with a foundation here that has more than enough money to squash me. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've been very public now for five years. Hell, I filed a report with the FBI. How much more public can I get? Uh, I have this, Everything I've done it would constitute a violation of their copyright, a slander, or a, uh, you know, uh, whatever. And the thing is, is they have made zero effort to talk to me. They have not tried to rebut anything that I've said. And they, the last, they, they have not. But they don't have, but they don't have to. See, well, that's the kicker. They don't yeah, but the to. thing is, if I would challenge, and I've done this on many radio shows, I would challenge anybody that's listening to this program to take any Getty image that you find on the Internet and publish that and see how long it takes before they sue you and try to extract money. Now, I have a picture of the Getty on the cover of my book, and I call them a demon-infested you know, infested, uh, place where they eat children. You would think that with all their billions of dollars that they would uh, do something about that. Now, as of right now, because of my announcement on on Facebook about the uh, charges being filed, we have people going to the Getty specifically to look around and ask them questions. And the tour guides now are having to answer questions about underground tunnels, blast doors, bunkers, etc. 
and there was a bomb threat yesterday at 3 p.m., and they cleaned the whole place out. Oh, that's interesting. Well, we're going to need in just a couple of seconds here to take our next break, but when we get back, I want to talk more about why these kids are down there. I want to know the, what their purpose is and where the proof is on that also. So, uh, folks, stay with us. This is one heck of a conversation, and I hope you all stay here and uh, hear the rest of it. So we'll see you on the other side in just a few minutes. are our personal gateways into infinite wisdom. Don't miss Shamanic Counselor and Indigenously Trained Dream Decoder, Sandra Corcoran's inspiring book, Shamanic Awakening Between the Dark and the Daylight. This remarkable work chronicles Sandra's 35 years of experience with diverse wisdom keepers and her initiations throughout the Americas and across the British Isles, Turkey, Greece, and Egypt. Sandy's knowledge of symbology, psychology, and myth influenced her dream blog and workshops. Sandy offers private tarot readings, international journeys, a meditative CD, as well as her book, Shamanic Awakening, to encourage you as you navigate this earthwalk, creating a deeper connection to yourself and all that is. Find this and more at Sandy's website, starwalkervisions.com. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. How would you like to be able to read other people's minds? Well, the next best thing is here. When you know how to read a person's name, you know how the person thinks, feels, and behaves. Each letter in our name holds a key to unlock our true essence. Our name contains both our gifts and challenges in this lifetime. Mnemology science discovers personality secrets hidden in the placement of the letters of our names, including the first and last impression people remember about us. Sharon shows us how to interpret the arrangement of letters as outlined in her book, Know the Name, Know the Person. Sharon Lynn Wyeth created Mnemology Science after 18 years of research and testing her theories and has supported thousands of people around the world in understanding themselves and others better. You'll enjoy Sharon's unique teachings as she shares her system to learn the gifts behind your given birth name. Even if you don't like your birth name, there are jewels in this book. If you're thinking of changing your name, ready to name your child, or wanting to get along better with others, this is the book for you. If you'd like to improve your relationships and change your life for the better, get the book today, Know the Name, Know the Person, or visit www.knowthename.com. That's www.knowthename.com. Hello, I'm Justina Marsh, and with my dad, Pete, we are going to present a new show called Too Good to Be True. Together, we are aiming to discover more truths about this world and beyond. Do you have unanswered questions about the world? Do you ever wonder about aliens, conspiracy theories, or the universe? There are many shows discussing subjects such as pyramids or UFOs, but we want to relay this information based on our own research, including from spiritual means. Hopefully, listeners will be helped with their own beliefs and will appreciate the psychic insights that add to the previous research and information. We both look forward to sharing this insight and beginning this journey with our listeners. Visit xzbn.net for more information about when to listen.
Well, welcome back to this next segment of uh, Paranormal Stakeout with our guest tonight, Stephen D. Kelly. We're talking about the Getty in Los Angeles. Uh, Stephen, fascinating stuff. And, you know, being a cop, like I said, I'm kind of proof driven. And uh, I need to know, we're, we've got all these kids. Now, I, I understand now these 100,000 kids are not just under the Getty in L.A. You're saying they're spread out over different areas, correct? Well, this is the thing. This is the Getty's just Pandora's box. But let me just say this. <clears throat> the first time I called the FBI, as soon as I mentioned my experience with the NSA and the CIA, they hung up on me. Now, I guess that seems like a joke, right? But, you know, anybody looks at my file, that's all in the file. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, how did I get their attention the second time to where they actually took me serious and filed the report? I asked them, I said, hey, listen, if I have a, a neighbor, if, my next, if I tell you that my next door neighbor has a dead body buried in their backyard, are you going to investigate? Or am I going to have to dig it up and provide proof? And they said, oh, well, that's up to local jurisdiction. And I said, well, okay, well, what if I report that there's 100,000 child sex slaves underneath a museum out here in Los Angeles? Is that in your jurisdiction? And they had to take the report. So the point is, is yeah. that if I say there's a dead body buried in my back in the neighbor's backyard, the law enforcement isn't going to ask me for proof. They're going to go back there well. with body-sniffing dogs. They're going to ask the neighbor, you know, gosh, your well, friend here they're says gonna, they're, they're going to come and talk to me, right? Yeah. They're going right, to come and yeah. talk to me at the very least. All right, let me just say this. I've been screaming this for at least five years, right? I had a show a while back called Marching Orders where I started the Occupy the Getty movement, and I told people that we're going to go there and we're going to walk into that property and we're going to have a little sit-in and we're going to do a, you know, like a little demonstration of some sort. And the FBI calls me up the next day and says, please don't do that. If you're going to have a demonstration, please do it on the sidewalk outside. I'm like, excuse me, guys, you're the FBI. I say there's 100,000 child sex slaves, but you're more concerned about my demonstrating and trying to raise awareness of this. So yeah. it's ridiculous. So in other words, this is what I told the FBI I, when I filed the report. I said, look, you're either going to investigate this or you're going to kill me. And, you're, and when you investigate this, you're going to prove that I'm, if I'm right or I'm wrong, and if I'm wrong, you can throw my ass in jail. Okay. That's well, the bottom line. What more can they do? What more do I need to do to prove that this is true? I put my life and liberty on the line for 100,000 child sex slaves, and I'm doing this for the whole damn world. Uh, and yeah, sure people and, uh, of me have died doing, the, doing lesser things than this. Your, your intent is commendable. There's no doubt about that. But let's go back to the kids down there. How do they get down there? How do they get right. $100,000 kids? All right, let's back a little bit. You, got, you remember a guy named Ted Gunderson? You remember Ted oh, Gunderson? Oh, I know. Yes, I do. Okay, Ted Gunderson, former head of the Los Angeles office of the FBI. And he said very famously before he died that they had this thing called the, what did he call them, the searchers? Was that it? It was Actually, white it was man. The Actually, the it was finders. the finders, and I actually had a, I actually had a uh, connection to that. But go ahead, it's the finders. Okay, well, what well, they they bands of white. You know, you got to understand, this is industrialized, and you also have to understand that these people that are doing this have nine thousand eight hundred percent of all the money in the world. Okay, if you can comprehend how much money these people have, then you can understand how easy it is for them to do all these things and pay these people to do these things. This is why these pedophiles get so much money and are treated so well they have well, so much money now i got i got to tell you this uh, up front a lot of people make this mistake but you understand that all sex child sex offenders are not pedophiles oh a great I'm, a great portion of them are a different type of child offender just as bad but okay. they're not all pedophiles just well, just the, right the torture and the the cannibalism and all that sort of thing is horrible and i'll tell you in this con in this re uh harvesting of the children i mean you're hearing the stories of these people coming out in public right now saying how they'll harvest all these children and the ones that aren't pretty enough or whatever they'll just kill and okay. it's it's an industrial thing and it's going to come to an end in my lifetime this has been going on for a long damn time but this i, is the, I, I you gotta know. know how did they get a these million kids? children go missing in the united states every year am i right you're, well, you're, you're close, but many of them are recovered, okay. too. Out, yes, well, that's true. Many of them are recovered. But out of those 890, 900,000 children go missing, at least 100,000 a year do not get recovered, correct? Uh, I think that number's a little high, but I, I haven't had a chance to. But, but okay. But okay. I've, trust me, I've looked at these numbers. I, Yeah, I know a good number of them or whatever they are. But trust me, the way this, for instance, in Los Angeles, where they recruit them, they, they look for 
teenagers that are uh, out of out of with their parents. They do these raves, these underground parties. They recruit these kids. They're you know it's it's not just children being abducted. Their recruitment process is is pervasive. It's all over everywhere. It, it, it's intense. And you got to understand is these these uh, this, the FBI want to know the same thing. There's more than one entrance to this crap, okay? The Skirball Center across the street from the Getty has a tunnel that links to the Getty. All they got to do is investigate that. That's not hard to find. Well, why does the Skirball Center have a, t- a tunnel that goes underground to the Getty? There, okay? there, may, be, there, there may be other reasons there they can't. Many, I don't know what many, they are. There are but, many tunnels that go out into the Getty, and their reasons are because it is – let me tell you something – I have friends in Hollywood and high places, and they have lizard parties. Trust me. They have lizard parties, private parties in Hollywood where they have big-ass statues of lizards, and they sit around okay. They have ritual abortions at these parties. It's crazy. Anybody who's well, anybody is at these parties. Well, I, and now you're getting into another subject that we may not have time to get into that with the right. lizard. Bottom but. line, anybody that doesn't agree with me and doesn't doubt me, all you got to do is get access to my CIA file, my FBI file, and my NSA file. And if you got credentials and ability to do that, then more power to you. Well, and, and all, all I'm getting at right here is I, I, I want to find out. I just I want the evidence. I want to know how they've gotten those kids down there. The you're, is, you're, saying, you're, you're saying that they were abducted. is the elevator. All you got to do is go to that elevator and go down that elevator. It's so yeah, different. They can't. There's, a thing called, there's a thing called the Constitution. You just uh, can't do that. Well, you know what? There's there's a there's also there's a lot of stuff. There's due diligence and there's investigation. And trust me, there's this thing also called continuity of government. Now, if mm-hmm. the government wants to declare that this facility is part of its system of continuity of government, then it better do so. And the reason why it has not done so is why this facility is vulnerable, and they know it. They know it. Why do you think the Queen freaked out this Christmas and went into hiding and is still freaking out? Because that's her bunker, and it's now compromised. Okay. And once again, that's we're, we're getting into a, an, another area that we're going to touch on in a minute. I want to get back to the kids. Why? Are, okay, let's uh, let's take go get on the assumption you've, you've got the kids down there. Mm-hmm. Why have they kidnapped them? Again, as they are, first of all, they're looking for children that have uh, abilities, psychic abilities that they can recruit and, and become these uh, super soldiers, whatever you want to call them. Most mm-hmm. of them are being used for the louche, the collection of louche, uh, which is what the whole purpose is. It's an industrial process. It's like the damn Matrix where you've got these guys in these little capsules and feeding the, the batteries. It's the exact same thing. You know, They don't make these movies just because they're creative. They're trying to tell you what's going on. This is what it's like. Only the thing is, is it's not wires and tubes like the Matrix. It's something else because it's dealing with the uh, stuff that's way beyond most people's comprehension. Oh, there's no, there's no doubt about it. And, and, and Stephen, that's why I'm asking you these tough questions. I, if you want folks to take your take your information, grasp it, and run with it, you got to give them. You got to give them something tangible. Now I'm looking up some uh, statistics right here in 2016. Um, NCMEC, the uh, National Missing Children uh, Foundation, assisted law enforcement and families with more than 20,500 cases of missing children. 90% were endangered runaways, 6% family abductions, 1% lost, injured, or otherwise uh, missing, 1% were non-family ab- uh, abductions, and 2% critically missing young adults from 18 to 20. When you talk about these kids, how, what are their age ranges that, that have been abducted and taken down to the Getty? They will take any child that they can get their hands on. Okay, uh, but I mean, under certain pedophiles, for example, like them prepubescent. Is that what well, they prefer? They or? will take, they will, you know, Just like any. I said, nothing's better than one that hasn't been born yet. That's just the ideal situation. But uh, okay. if they can snatch a baby out of a stroller, they will. Okay. Now, All something right. I should mention real quick, I know you're running out of time, but nuclear war, supposedly we're getting threatened by North Korea, they want to nuke L.A. You know, they've been saying for 100 years that if we ever get onto their undergrounds that they will destroy these things and blow them up with all our treasure, which is what is located at the Getty, lots of treasure. Mm-hmm. So if I say that there's all these children, yeah, I also say there's a nuclear bomb that they will detonate if we ever investigate. So I challenge the FBI to investigate it, and while you're there, get rid of the nuclear bomb that they are threatening to destroy L.A. with and going to blame on North Korea. Well, and, and I'll, I'll, uh, 
um, echo that. If there's evidence and they have the legal right to do it, I say go for it. I agree with you. Go to if nothing else, find out if there's nothing. Well, here's down your there. evidence. Remember when the uh, Israeli embassy was so radioactive because of all the nuclear bombs they were smuggling in there that they had to shut it down. Well, where do you think right. those nuclear bombs went? They went to all these facilities because every single one of these things has a nuclear trap door that closes the door. Mm-hmm. Because they'll they don't care. They're two miles down. They'll do they'll nuke the Getty, close the door, and nobody's gonna be digging them out. That's what they sure. plan on doing. So this is a game of bluff. Okay. I say mm-hmm. we do it now because if they're positioning themselves right now to blame us with a false flag, the ultimate false flag, I say we cut their nuts off before they get a chance. But Steve, here's the problem. You still got to have a little thing called probable cause that fits in with the law, the rules oh, of the we gotta Constitution. Have, we got to have 200 million people screaming for an investigation. That's what we need. Okay. You know, and, and here's the issue, though. If the Getty's not going to let you in, what's your probable cause to get in there? And no, I'm not doubting remote viewing. I'm not. But to They're going to have to point- throw my ass in jail to make me stop. And I will destroy this institution from the outside. They're already hurting. They're already hurting. Their reputation is trashed. Okay, it's trash. It's becoming public knowledge as we speak. Nineteen thousand people have have seen my meme as of right now. I've had two hundred something shares. There are people going to that Getty right now. Complain. There are people calling the FBI right now as we speak, saying, "What the hell? What are you going to do? What are you going to do?" They're calling the F. This is. They can't hide it. It's getting out of control. But it's give me so something. Of- uh, on my show right now, give me something, Stephen. I'm right. not. I, I'm not to give me something. That is probable cause the FBI can go forward and conduct an investigation, look inside that building. Give me something. Was something seen? Uh, did somebody else come forward? What kind of what kind of solid evidence? Yeah, no, that's can- funny because they say I see this so much on Facebook. They say, "Gosh, that Stephen Kelly is the only one saying this." Everything that everyone says. Give me some information that doesn't lead back to Stephen Kelly. You know, excuse me for being born to into this world to save this world. That's all I'm here for is to point this out. This is the door to Pandora's box. I'm not going to give you nothing. I'm just going to say you want to. The best thing I've got right now is these children and the Pizzagate and all this crap because it, it doesn't matter what I say. All they have to do is say national security and all this crap. But since when is is sal- slavery? and human trafficking and and blood sacrifice to Satan, national security. And we all know with WikiLeaks that this is going on. And I'll tell you something, there's a majority of us that are going to rise up, and this is how we're going to do it, and this is how we're going to get our world back. This is how we get our world back. I'm with you. All you got to do, all I'm asking for is the legal problem cause. a lot of patriots out there that are getting riled up right now. Who do you think, I mean, why do you think they called in that bomb threat yesterday? This is just the beginning. Okay. It may be this the is, beginning, this beginning is, but I'm a man of law, and I'm going to tell you something. i got to have that probable cause, and that's, the only, that's what I'm missing here. That's what I'm missing. Just like Gary Webb at this. You know what? I called up the San Jose Mercury News, and I said, hey, you know Gary Webb, your guy over there that they got broke the story about the CIA and the cocaine uh-huh. smuggling? I said, yeah, that guy was a friend of mine. You know, you guys, anyone in balls over there to run this story about the Getty? And they said, no. They said, that's, they don't have the balls no. for that. Nobody well, does. Yeah. We gotta Nobody take has- our we gotta get ready to take our last break. I'm gonna have to cut you short here, but I want to continue this when we come back on the other side. Uh, fascinating stuff. But Stephen, I need so I need evidence. I need that probable cause. We'll talk more about it. Folks, stay with us for the last segment of Paranormal Stakeout. See you in a couple of minutes. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, this product is a real winner. 
To learn more about 123 Ready TV, visit our website at www.xzbn.net. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. There's a legend shared by many indigenous cultures of a time when the nations were cast to the four corners of the world. Each nation was given a body of sacred knowledge that held a different portion of the truth to preserve. True reality could not be known until all the nations reunited, combining the information. If a single one was missing, the world could not be reborn and darkness would prevail. The Science of Magic Radio is dedicated to reuniting the sacred knowledge. With the understanding, none of us has all the answers, but together we can open new perceptions and possibilities. Through our combined vision, the world can be reborn into a place where darkness no longer prevails. Join me, Gwilda Wiecka, and the Science of Magic daily on the Exxon Broadcast Network, xzbn.net, or visit us at thescienceofmagic.net. Welcome back, folks, to Paranormal Stakeout. This has been uh, one heck of a discussion. Stephen, I can't thank you enough for being with us tonight. I want to remind everybody to visit Stephen's uh, Facebook at Stephen D. Kelly. Check out his website at truthcatradio.com. Uh, I'd also like to invite everybody to check out all the terrific broadcasting on the X Zone Broadcast Nation, www.xcbn.net. And also visit me at uh, www.paranormalfbi.com, which is my team's uh, website. Also, www.paranormalstakeout.com. You can also catch me on Facebook at Florida Bureau of Paranormal Investigation. Stephen, a spirited conversation. And, you know, (laughs) the the one thing that the one thing you've got to understand coming from my point of view, and I know you've had your issues with law enforcement in the past. A lot of folks have. I, I have no problem with that. But we need evidence now am i doubting you no i'm not doubting you i'm just saying give me something that allow us under the constitution to legally find this evidence and that's i gotta what tell I'm you just- 
I got to tell you, when I was do, when I ran SK Industries, my primarily primary customer base was law enforcement and special forces, uh, okay. but mostly law enforcement across the United States. I introduced the whole concept of putting lasers on police guns, and I did that to save okay. lives. That's a big deal. It's now it's now pretty common now. Made a lot of millionaires doing this stuff, but. Uh, you know, so when you talk about law enforcement, I've, I've been on the inside, okay? And I've also been a private okay. eye. And I've, I've been, as a private eye, I saw stuff about law enforcement. I learned that how it's really a mafia. And I, I had a case, actually, uh, involving somebody. And it turned out that the person, the, the perpetrator who was actually uh, causing problems for this person was, was connected to the people who hired me. And I found out that uh, everybody was involved from the judges, the DAs, doctors, lawyers, everything mental well, health institutions they were it's like a big ass mafia trust me um, well uh, I, I, would I you know I, let me come on i've been that, 20 years i've been dealing with cops this is true okay every agency has the cia nsa is not excluded there's good guys and bad guys even at the fbi okay there's good guys and bad guys and it, that goes to show to say in every institution there's there's pro constitution and pro new world order types okay and i'm pro constitution so and i'm also christian but well, well, we're on the same wavelength there, my friend. But let's let's get back let's get back to the Getty. I, if there's kids being hurt there, I want to know about it. Mm -hmm. Give me something. What has have you inter, have, have you talked to anybody that's actually emerged from there? The closest that we've dealt with anybody that's actually been down there was a guy named uh, God, Dale or something like that. I can't remember his name, but he was the handler for the trust fund manager. Okay, now you got to understand, trust fund manager is the guy that controls the, the checkbook for a multi-billion dollar corporation. We're talking to some pretty high-ranking people here. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the only people that go down there are NSA types, and they're not going to say anything. So it's, you know... That's just the way it is. And so that's the, only, the only thing but, we got, the only thing we got then, is that gentleman plus the remote viewers. Other than that, we don't have anything tangible. Am I, if I got that right, elevator that that holds a damn semi truck that goes down a mile that nobody seems to want to investigate. But how can they when it when there's no legal right to? Now, and see, here's the problem. People tend to get upset when things like that are investigated. So but what, people, you know, uh, there's a guy named. Uh, He's a lieutenant governor, Gavin Newsom of the state of California. You know the guy? Okay. No. He's, uh, anyway, lieutenant governor of California, pretty powerful position. He's bought and paid for by the Getty family. He's completely financed by the Getty family. They control everything, okay? So, so no, as far as legally concerned, they own it. Come on, you're talking about people that have more trillions of dollars that you can imagine. There's nobody they can't buy, but they, except me, maybe. Okay? Well, and yet, uh, I, I sat down with these people, and they told me to my face that they couldn't kill me. They called it the Can't Be Killed Club. I didn't make that up. They did. Why can't they kill you? I mean, hell, it's, what you're I, saying I, will I, blow a little. Hard. You know, I've been trying really hard. How much harder can I try? Come on. I give them my <laughs> ad. Seriously, how much harder can I try? They've got billions and billions of dollars, and I'm trying to destroy them, and it's like I'm just one little person living in a ghetto. Come on, guys. But no, here's the that's, kicker. Here's the kicker, right Stephen. That's proof right there. No, I'm the toughest, not, toughest guy in the world. Proof. Are they afraid no. of me? What no, do? they're not afraid of you. The problem is you're not producing uh, the proof uh, that's scaring them. Afraid of me? Trust me, they're afraid of me. All right, you know you can't do any research on on me because most of it's gone. Law 17 and my company SK Industries is not around anymore. But trust me, they're afraid of me. Okay? okay. You knew what I used to do for a living. You'd know. Yeah, they're afraid of me. Okay. I'm a very well, scary. Not anymore, though. Not anymore. Okay. Not well, for whatever you, I'm not scared of you. For whatever, that, for whatever that's worth. Tell me no, about Michael. Is. Tell me, tell me about You're Michael. You know, I'm very, I'm very you know, interested like, in his super soldiers. You know about the super soldiers. Tell me about you know, the super soldiers. You know super soldiers. Do you know anything about super soldiers at all? Not never specifically heard of it. in those terms. Tell, why don't you tell oh, me about it? Super soldiers, and you'll find me real quick. Okay. okay. Anyway, okay. that's all I'm going to say about that because that's a whole other show. It's like, well, shoot, we could probably do another four hours. Talk to me, uh, Mike Lacchino. I've noticed his name pop up in some of your stuff. Yeah, Mike Lacchino was what's just named death of uh, Michael, uh, what's his name, uh, Max Spears, another so-called super soldier. Uh -huh. Okay, Killing each other off. They're eating each other off right now. There's dissension within their ranks. Okay, uh, Aquino represents the old school Satanism. Max Spears was the new breed Satanism. Satan, the Satanists, the dark side, try to bring in love and light people so they could get some of our power 
Okay, the, we're the Jedi, they're the Sith. Okay, so they tried to recruit Jedi types to work with them, and it backfired. And now they're having to kill them off, and that's why they killed off Max Spears, who just uh, died here in Poland recently. Okay. Got well, a bunch of black food out of his mouth when he died. Okay, it's a little X Files sounding. Okay, well, well just X Files. <laughs> well, it's all X Files. It sounds like X Files, and uh, it sounds. Frankly, I'm going to tell you, it sounds more like a TV show than reality because I'm still waiting for that bit of proof. But I want oh, to ask... Listen Lawrence, listen to this. Here's a good one. You ever seen the Star Trek movie, Star Trek II, the new one, new series mm-hmm. come out? Yeah. Okay, yeah. They open, they open up. You remember the movie? They open up with what? The Getty. The guy's walking into the Getty. He's, he walks into the Getty. He goes down a secret elevator to a big secret underground complex. He proceeds to blow up the entire underground complex. That's how they began Star Wars II, the new Star Wars series. Okay. Now, that's, I'm putting it right in front of your face. Secret underground structure at the Getty. They put it in a damn movie. That's how yeah. they counter people. Okay. They, they uh, me. Remember, I came out with this information in 2012. November of 2012, I published my book, and I went public and started speaking about this publicly. And yet they have not sued me in all these years. And I'm complaining. I'm so tired of them not doing anything about it, that I'm complaining to the FBI. And you know the FBI, they will kill people that they don't like, like those witnesses from the Boston bombing. Uh, Gee, they, well, the guy, you, they, that, they killed that, him. they not kill a guy that they went to interview recently? That was a little bit different than just killing him, but that's a whole different subject. That, three FBI agents, no witnesses, the witness gets killed. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm I, off. I mean, if you're going, uh, yeah, I'm but you can't. People. I'm you're saying, looking hey, for, you're looking me. for conspiracies under every rock, and I don't know that that's credible. Uh, I don't know that's helping your story. World, I'm saying you guys are welcome to try to kill me. Right. If it'll Look, save I've, I've only got a couple minutes left, and I did tell the audience we talked uh, a little bit about reptoids. What about give reptoids? me? What, t- t- what is their connection to all this? Uh, well, they're kind of like, uh, there's at least 8,000 different species of whatever, and obviously the Draco reptilian types are very much involved in the royal family. Obviously, David Icke is really into all that crap. Personally, I take everything with a grain of salt. I only talk about the stuff I talk about. Okay. Well, how, how, is, the, how is the reptoid First, human to the reptoid connected to the game? Back in the Billy Meyer days. That was when I first mm-hmm. got exposed to it. Okay? okay. And it was the Caver Getty people that went and verified all of it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and what what is their connection to the Getty? What is their what is their connection to the rule over the Getty? Maybe that's a better they're question. Kind of controlling the Earth per se. They're they're up there. You know. I mean, I could tell you how far. Who rules those guys? You know. I mean, come on. There's, this is there's a pecking order, and they're just on above the humans. There's there's things above them. And once again, the proof is only in what. You know, they make fun of us because we're all ignorant animals. Trust me. That's what I, I'm dealing with. That's what I'm dealing with. <laughs> the people I'm trying to make fun of us all for being so ignorant and requiring proof. They trained us to do that. It's actually, they, may, they actually laugh at us for going, oh, prove it, prove it. That's like a stupid human trick. But, but Steve, Stephen, are we not a country of laws? Uh, we are. We are. Sure. Well, let me so see. What you said, a, too many laws poorly written, uh, Applied randomly, randomly so, applied, randomly written laws. Yeah. So what if the FBI came and kicked your door in right now just waiting because right. they thought? Would that we, be fair? I've been waiting for it. I've been waiting for it. Come on, guys. It's either it's either kill me or investigate, and they won't do either one. And well, and now guys are telling me it's top secret. So I, what do I got left to do? But scream louder. I'll scream louder. That's all I can do. Well, here's what I what I'd like to see you do: if scream louder. Give us something concrete to work with. You just can't use words. You cannot just use what people have uh, have we'll seen. Continue to die because of this silliness. Because we don't have the balls to take action. So patriots will rise up and take action. It will happen. Patriots within the FBI are rising up and taking action. Well, I'm the first one to stand up against wrong, my friend. No You're doubt about that. I'm making the show so people are listening. And trust me, there's an avalanche of exponential activity and it's coming down on these guys and they know it and that's why they're threatening us threatening us with nuclear war right now because they are losing and we are winning but Stephen, i'm telling you for your this is just my suggestion to you as an old cop if you're going to talk it 
have the ability to prove it. And right now, words just aren't enough to prove it. And what you're telling me right now is not enough for us to go forward, for the FBI to go forward. That's just my opinion. Well, with that, it looks like we're about out of time. And this is a, we didn't even cover half the things I wanted to, Stephen, but I appreciate you being here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the uh, Paranormal Stakeout, and we'll see you next time on the other side. <laughs>